So that uh, lecture is just about uh, an hour away now where we'll hear from Reverend Al Sharpton and uh, the message that he's going to be delivering. I spoke to him uh, yesterday and he spoke about uh, how he admired Steve Biko. And so his fame uh, was uh, beyond our borders and uh, for many years celebrated and continues to be celebrated. Well, we're now joined by political analyst uh, Professor Somado Dafikeni to unpack the legacy of Steve Biko and his political career. Uh, before we get to, to Steve Biko's legacy, um, how are the plans for the lecture going this evening? Are they on track? Plans are on track. We will be starting with a slideshow of the background of this Steve Biko memorial lecture at half past five. And then at exactly five minutes to six, that's when the live program starts. And uh, we will then have Professor Mantla Makanya, who will make opening remarks. And then Kosinati Biko, the founding member of the Steve Biko Foundation, also making remarks and introducing our keynote speaker for tonight. And uh, that's how the proceedings will go. All right. Um, what can we expect from Al Sharpton later? What we can expect is first his recollection of how he knew Steve Biko and how Biko's philosophy of black consciousness actually transcended the continent and also impacted on the Americas. And he'll also be trying to connect this current pandemic of racism which has triggered the Black Lives Matter and how that in itself, the struggles across the Atlantic and across the world are afflicting humanity today and what should be done to figuratively lift the knee of the neck of those who are still discriminated against. A short while ago, we were listening to uh, the 70s group uh, talking about their time uh, with Steve Biko and uh, what black consciousness was all about. I wonder if you can sort of take uh, as, as Steve Biko's legacy, his thinking, and transplant it to 2020 in a modern day South Africa and help us navigate the waters that we're in now with his thinking. Well, I do think that there is no other better period than now to rekindle the black consciousness ideas because what has happened in the 26 years, that's why we face so many problems. We focused on the building of institutions. We focused on systems. We focused on infrastructure. And we didn't work on the consciousness of the people and the agency that they should have in making sure that this democracy becomes a success transformation project becomes a success. That is the reason why today you still have people who have a false sense of inferiority and others having a false sense of superiority. And that is also why at times we display instances of self-hate instead of self-pride and black pride for who we are and self-love and trying to rekindle the values that made us who we are. So Steve Biko's black consciousness ideas are more relevant now that we've seen the absence of critical consciousness, the absence of self-reliance, consciousness, and resourcefulness, which will be needed more now in the era of the fourth industrial revolution, in the era of innovation than ever before. How did Steve... Um, teach these ideas and share these ideas that they were embraced perhaps as a uh, I don't know a toolkit for us to be able to do the same uh, today besides having to read and also reflect in discourses at depth because he was not a person of slogans he was a person of ideas and he studied the liberation struggles across the world and in the black Americas and elsewhere. 
So when he reflected on our own condition, it was based on the depth of reflection. And not only that, he combined politics with community development. That's why he had several community development projects. Uh, because today the problem is that politics has become a career. People stay elsewhere, they come in, they give a speech, they leave. But for him, he was organically embedded within the communities that he was working with. And that in itself is also another thing that we should take into account. And we must also remember that Steve Bigo died at a very young age of uh, 31, when in actual sense much of his work he was doing in the 20s. So this should be an inspiration for the youth to be knowledge workers, to be activists, and to be involved in the communities. But materialism of today has supplanted most of that. If uh, Steve Beaker was uh, alive today and he was a politician in some form or another, what would he be preaching today? Would there be a modern day version of black consciousness, for example? Well, I do think that he was quite innovative. He would have adjusted some of the ideas to answer the challenges of today uh, because each generation has a context. And I'm sure he would have amplified the notion and the importance of values and the consciousness itself. And he would have decried the crass materialism that we see, as well as the social distance we see between leaders and the people they call their constituencies. Uh, Professor Somadoda Fikeni, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks very much indeed uh, for sharing your thoughts with us and giving us a, a little bit of a teaser of uh, what we might expect later this evening. Thanks for your time. Thank you. In the so-called guarantees for minority rights,